number of platforms on issues of climate justice, clean energy jobs, the child tax credit, paid family leave, universal pre-K, the black lung excise tax funding, among many, many others, the list goes on and on. But we're here today to share a common interest in that Build Back Better is good for West Virginia. It is good for all of us. And we want Senator Manchin to hear our voices today in front of his Charleston office at the West Virginia Lottery Building. We have some speakers lined up for you today, and then we'll have an opportunity for an open mic. Anyone that feels so moved to come forth and share their story of how Build Back Better would benefit them, you'll have the chance to come forward and share your words. We're gonna kick things off first talking about climate within the Build Back Better Act. The co-founder of the West Virginia Climate Alliance, Perry Bryant, is going to say a few words about how these climate provisions and clean energy provisions will benefit our state and protect us from the worst impacts of climate change. Let's give a round of applause for Perry Bryant. Thank you, Morgan. I, I, I would like to uh, explain a little bit about climate change. Um, the, uh, the climate is warming, as we all know, and if we've had, as a result, we have severe weather, whether it's hurricanes or uh, uh, heat waves or flooding in West Virginia in particular. Um, so there are all these things. But we're currently, we've warmed up from pre-industrial pre levels about 1.1 degrees Celsius. The, the aim is to try to keep global warming to below 1.5 degrees Celsius. And why is that important? I'll give you just one example. If we go to 1.5 degrees Celsius, we're going to impact 70 to 70 percent of all the coral reefs in, in around the globe. Uh, if we go to 2 degrees Celsius, we'll impact 99 percent of all the coral reefs in the world. We will virtually eliminate all of the coral reefs at 2 degrees Celsius. And so when you hear 1.5 and 2 degrees, you think, oh, it's not all that bad. You know, we, we, we can afford to go at 2. 2 is, to, is actually very damaging, damaging, not only to the coral reefs, but to agriculture, to migration, uh, to, to being able to have a sustainable living um, in, throughout the world. Um, the Build Back Better has a number of major provisions on climate. It will, prevent, it will invest in wind, it will invest in solar, it will invest in batteries, it will invest in electric vehicles, it will invest in energy efficiency, it will, it will, make us, it will invest in making our electrical grids sounder and more stable. Okay, is that close, is that close enough? So all those investments, and, and Senator Manchin has said one of the excuses he gives for being opposed to the Build Back Better is it, that it, uh, we've already made enough progress on climate, and that's factually incorrect. Uh, if we if we can without the Build Back Better, we would probably ex exceed two degrees Celsius by 2030, 2040, or 2050. Um, the the Biden administration says we need to we need to cut greenhouse gases by 50 percent by 2030. That's an aggressive goal, but an important one, and that will keep us on a glide path to be able to be at net zero by 2050. But without the Build Back Better, we won't reach a 50 percent reduction by 2030. We'll reach a 50 percent reduction in 2050, and again, we'll probably exceed at two degrees Celsius and have the severe consequences of more flooding, more heat waves, uh, et cetera. So it's really important that we all um, understand what's behind the climate change and, and urge Senator Manchin to save our planet uh, by supporting the Build Back Better proposal. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Perry. As we know, climate change and the climate provisions in Build Back Better are extremely important aspects to support West Virginians against the worst impacts of future climate disasters.
that there is much, much more within this bill that will benefit our state, such as the expansion of free lunch and health care for veterans. These are two unique issues that will directly benefit West Virginians' constituents, some of Senator Manchin's constituents. So here to speak on those two issues is Lakeisha Lloyd. She is an organizer with Common Defense. Let's give Lakeisha a big round of applause. Hello, everybody. Hello. All right. So, as we know, I'm a veteran. Yeah. There are many of us here in the state of West Virginia. The state of West Virginia is ranked the highest of giving more men and women to the United States military in all wars than any other state in the Union. 70,000 West Virginian veterans depend on VA health care as their family care provider, prescriptions, mental health treatment, and everything else that comes along with the injuries that we incur while serving our country. In Build Back Better, $500 billion is going to be sent to improve, modernize, and bring our VA health care system into the 21st century. They're going to, it's going to help speed up the process of claims of veterans who are sitting here waiting to get their disability compensation. This is what Build Back Better does for veterans here in the state of West Virginia who gave it all. Not only do we have to worry about veteran health care, but as we all know, childhood food insecurity is a serious issue here in the state of West Virginia. It wasn't that too long ago that when we stood 55 counties united, regardless of political affiliates, we all came together in our communities to make sure that these children who only meal is provided at school came together as a community to provide and make sure that these children went with food and did not go without. This is not an income issue. This affected working families, low-income families, you've got families out here that are working two to three jobs just to be able to pay their rent and utilities and can't have enough left over to put food in the refrigerator for their children to be able to have a dinner at night. Build Back Better helps expand free lunch for all children here in the state of West Virginia. It also includes $65 per school-age child during the summer to help these families that we all know, we all know someone who has been affected by this. $65 per each child, school age child, to be able to help them during the summer. Our veterans need Build Back Better. Our children need Build Back Better. So we need to make sure our voices are loud and clear and let Senator Manchin know, hey, we're here. We support this. We need it passed. Not today, not yesterday, right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Thank you so much, Lakeisha. Let's give her a warm round of applause. Woo! I've realized that I've failed to introduce myself to you. Today I've been your MC and will continue to be for the rest of the hour. My name is Morgan King and I'm the Climate Campaign Coordinator at the West Virginia Rivers Coalition. I work predominantly on climate change issues and water issues, but as we know, the issues in Build Back Better will benefit the environment, it will benefit West Virginians. We know that climate change is not just an issue of the environment. It's an issue of social justice, it's an issue of health justice, it's a health emergency. So that's why I'm so happy to be here today to support the provisions within Build Back Better with you all across a wide array of issues. I want to just take a minute and share with you some of the many, many organizations that have come together to put this event on. Just this morning, the idea of a candlelight vigil and rally outside of Senator Manchin's office came to light. And it took the work of dozens of organizations 
to rally together to make this happen. We'll be out here tomorrow and Wednesday and possibly later in the week, continuing the rally, continuing to uplift your voices to share why Build Back Better is good for West Virginia. I just want to take a minute and list off the many organizations that have expressed support for this today that represents thousands and thousands of West Virginians. The West Virginia Climate Alliance, the Citizens Climate Lobby, the NAACP Charleston, West Virginia branch, Reimagine Appalachia, the Chesapeake Climate Action Network, the American Friends Service Committee, the Poor People's Campaign of West Virginia, Race Matters West Virginia, West Virginia Citizen Action Group, West Virginia Environmental Council, West Virginia for Affordable Health Care, Rise Up West Virginia, the National Association of Social Workers in West Virginia, the West Virginia Sierra Club, Common Defense, New Jobs Coalition, Black by God, the West Virginian, West Virginia's chapter of the NAACP, Call to Action for Racial Equality, Kanawha Valley Now, Our Future West Virginia, Indivisible Greenbrier County and Indivisible Summers County, the Women's March of Summers County, and the Greenbrier chapter of the NAACP. This represents thousands, tens of thousands of members across the state of West Virginia that want to see Build Back Better passed. So thank you all for the organizations that have supported this today. Right now, I want to open the floor and give the mic to you all so that you all can tell your stories. Share why you're here today. Share with Senator Manchin why you care about Build Back Better. So if anyone feels so moved to come forward and share their story, uh, please do so now. The mic is yours. Come on forward. Or actually, you come on forward, Catania, and then we'll pass it to him since you're closer. Hello, my name is Catania Hart. I'm a part of the National and National Organization for Women, as well as Canal Valley Now and West Virginia Now. I am also a vice president of the NAACP West Virginia. And so, all that is to say, I have contact with lots of individuals. And not only do I have my story, but I have theirs as well. That if we're coming back, I, I have several to share. But what I want to share is a personal one. When we went to D.C. to fight for this and to speak to Manchin, and I was arrested in D.C. on my second trip because he didn't fulfill what he seemed to imply he would do, which would be to build back better. He did not, so we went back out there and I got myself arrested. And it became extremely important to me because that's when I found out my boyfriend my boyfriend that I've been with since 1992, my life partner, was getting insulin from relatives because in his retirement he couldn't afford his insulin. I didn't know. We've been doing this for years and I didn't know. And so it becomes even more important. As I started to think about just my own health care needs, that's why I was there. And the fact that I had spent 13 years of my life as a pharmacy technician and how we continue to have to try to help people through the gaps and the times that they did, couldn't pay. And that personally, we took money out of our pockets. And we kept going back and forth to the doctors. Is there another medication? Is there something else they can get? They really need their medication. What else can they have? What else is there out there? What other resources? Talking to insurance companies, just trying to get people what they needed. Not simply what they wanted. There was nothing there that said anything about privilege or, or entitlement. It was simply trying to survive and live. And to come to this point in my life and find that I am now a diabetic. And I have two extremely expensive medications. And along with my diabetes comes the high blood pressure. Things that I worked really hard to try to stay away from, but it still came and got me and I have to pay for these things. And so as I look at the happiness for my future, thoughts of leaving my job and striking it out on my own, being a professional volunteer, working for people, starts to snag me in a net. 
of just working for big business, not working for my community. It also makes me think about those who are on the front lines, making sure that they have opportunities, making sure that they are fully covered, making sure that their pay is there because it's really traumatic hearing people's stories. Secondary trauma is real because we feel for each other, right? I mean, that's why we're out here, not just for ourselves, but for my neighbors that couldn't be here, for my friends and coworkers that couldn't be here. When I was in DC, I got information that a friend had passed away. They expressed how they were concerned that they passed away because the doctors didn't do all they could. At least in their mind, money became an issue that they weren't fully covered. And there was study trying to wait and the attention. How is that America? I don't know. And I just don't understand how we had an opportunity to speak with him and share stories. And so many people have gone out and spoke with him, more than I even knew. And he still says no. How am I not a person that somehow he made me little by way of backhandedly saying, I've only spoke to organizations. I'm a person. I'm not an organ. Why, why can't you see that I'm a person? Why can't you see my needs are real? Why can't you see my neighbor's needs are real? There's no reason for people to pass away here for lack of coverage. There's no reason why people have to pick between, at this time, grandkids, food, or medicine. How does that make any sense? So I stand here lost today, that we're getting ready to go into the holidays, that he's allowing us to go into the holidays without Build Back Better, without hope on the horizon, without seeing us as individuals and people. I just don't understand. How is this okay? But let me tell you, I'm so thrilled and excited to see each and every one of you here because I know that you care and I know I'm not alone and I know as I struggle and fight for my boyfriend, our relationship, the, my family, that you guys are fighting alongside of me and so I want to thank each and every one of you for coming out. I really wish I could be thanking Joe Manchin. I really wish this is why we were out here. I really wish this was a celebration of community and things being better. A brighter day for tomorrow, but we're still fighting. And it's hard when the armor is chinked and there's cracks because you've been just taking so many hits after hit after hit. But it's good to know that I'm not alone. That's good and somewhat unfortunate. So thank you. I'll be back, but this is where I am now. I just left the chiropractor, finding out I have tendinitis in, in my shoulder. But I have to just keep working. Well, I don't have to face that kind of a future. Why do our kids have to chase that kind of a future? It just seems like a lot. A lot that we we shouldn't have to deal with. We've got the power to make a difference. So 
thank you.